Lung cancer is the number one cause of cancer deaths in the United States, and cigarette smoking is the main risk factor, and yet so many people continue to smoke. Dr. Ackerman is one of the First Coast's leading oncologists and treats many lung cancer patients in his practice, and today he's here to talk about the importance of quitting this bad habit, and we know so much about cigarette smoke, but yet a lot of people keep smoking. That's the thing. Um, so let's talk about lung cancer, and I'm sure you see a lot of lung cancer patients, obviously, in your practice. I do, Casey. Uh, lung cancer is extremely prevalent. It's the leading cancer killer in both men and women. We've talked about cancers before, and I've told you before that breast cancer is the most common cancer in women, and prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men. But, but those cancers were able to diagnose early and cure. But lung cancer is the leading killer of men and women as far as cancer goes. It accounts for about 27% over a quarter of cancer deaths are due to lung cancer. And this year alone, there'll be nearly a quarter million Americans that will be diagnosed with lung cancer. Um, what's really alarming about this is that it really is preventable. It's, 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 it's in a very large way preventable because 90% of lung cancer cases are directly related to smoking and caused by smoking. And those 90% would be preventable if those people didn't smoke. You no, know, remember the story about Christopher Reeves' wife, mm -hmm. and she uh, suffered from lung cancer and died, but she never smoked a day in her life. So, I mean, this obviously affects people who smoke, but what about the people that get lung cancer that don't smoke? So we have exceptions both ways. We have, you know, we all know about, <clears throat> you know, Uncle Bill smoked his whole life, sure. lived till he was 90 and, never, and, and died of old age. And so we have a lot of people who smoke for many, many years and never get lung cancer. And we do have some people, unfortunately, who've never smoked and get lung cancer. But the non-smokers that have lung cancer represent about 10, only about 10% of lung cancer deaths. So if we eradicated smoking, we would eradicate 90% of lung cancer deaths. It still would be there, but much less prevalent. So look at the numbers. I just told you a quarter million Americans would are gonna be diagnosed with lung cancer this year. If there was no smoking, there would be only 25,000 Americans. It would make it a very uh, infrequent wow. uh, uh, type of cancer. Wow, that's, that's a pretty uh, staggering statistic. Um, how does smoking exactly cause lung cancer? I mean, we, I, you know, I understand it's the smoke going into the lungs, but kind of get into more detail about that. So when the cigarette's burning, when tobacco's burning, uh, certain chemicals are produced. And these chemicals go into your lungs, and these are carcinogenic. These chemicals themselves directly cause cancer by irritating the, the lung mucosa and irritating the tissue in the lung, so they are carcinogenic. But the other thing that, that a lot of people don't realize is, is, that the is that the tobacco smoke in and of itself is also harmful. What happens is in our lungs, uh, all day long we're breathing air, we're getting all sorts of toxins and bacteria that come in as we breathe, and our body is able to flush that out by these little uh, hair-like structures called cilia within our lungs, and these cilia bring secretions up, and we spit it out or cough it out or whatever, all these secretions that come up, and within these secretions are the bacteria that we inhale all day, and viruses that we might inhale, and toxins in the air, smoke that's in the air, whatever might be in the air. The tobacco smoke, when you, when you bring it into your lungs, it paralyzes those cilia. And so when those cilia are paralyzed, the body can't bring up those secretions, bring up those toxins, and get them out of the lung. So the tobacco smoke impairs the lung mechanism to get those out and allows these toxins to irritate the mucosa of the lung for a longer period of time and hence cause cancer that way as well. So what are some of the symptoms if someone's watching right now, even if they're a <laughs> smoker or a non-smoker, that they should be on the lookout for to think that they need to go see a medical professional? Well, unfortunately, these symptoms are nonspecific in many ways. Um, and you know, a, a, a persistent cough. Well, we all get coughs from a lots of things that aren't necessarily lung cancer. So a cough or chest pain or wheezing or shortness of breath or coughing up blood, these are the sort of things that are associated with lung cancer and other things as well. But if you get those symptoms and they are progressive, they mean they don't go away in a day or two, then you should see a physician because they could be, especially if you're at high risk for lung cancer, meaning that if you are a heavy smoker, because th they could be an indication that you might have lung cancer. The problem is that once you have these symptoms, lung cancer is generally in a more advanced stage. There are no signs or symptoms of lung cancer when it's a small tumor and when it could be cured more easily um, and, and caught early. So we do have some 
new uh, news about that. We have some new recommendations regarding routine lung cancer screening for those patients who are at high risk. Well, that was going to be my next question. You know, obviously for breast cancer, you have mammograms, so you have regular screenings that you can do for that. Is there a regular screening that you can do for to see if you have... Uh, right, so as you said, breast cancer, we have mammograms. Yeah. Prostate cancer, we have the PSA test. Sure. For lung cancer, we've had a hard time. For many, many years, we've had a hard time finding the appropriate test to diagnose people with lung cancer early. We tried looking at chest x-rays for many, many years, but that, that didn't seem to work. But we, what, what we have found, though, is the low-dose spiral CT scan, which is able to look at abnormalities in the lung. This is able to help us identify lung cancer uh, early. And, we have, and, and, and our current recommendations are that people who have a 30-pack year history of smoking should get an annual low-dose spiral CAT scan to look for these abnormalities in the lung, which, would be, which could be a lung cancer that's caught early. Now, what's 30-pack yeah. year history mean? That means if you smoke one pack a day for 30 years, or if you smoke two packs a day for 15 years. And we were talking about this during the commercial break, that you see people coming into your practice that smoke two packs a day or right. something. Or three. I just can't imagine that. If you have a cigarette every 15 minutes, for during your awakened hours, that's more than three packs a day, and there oh are people gosh. that smoke that much. They're able to smoke at work, and they smoke at home in the evening. Okay, and then the bottom line, if you're smoking, quit. There are resources out there. Right. Well, can, you know, it's yeah. never too late to quit. Okay. Even if you quit at 65, it'll add four years to your life. If you quit at 35, it'll add 10. And quitting sets an example for your family and for yeah. your children. It's a good thing to quit. All right. Dr. Ackerman, thanks as always for being Thank here. You, we Casey. appreciate you being here and sponsoring the segment. And for more questions regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you might have, connect with Dr. Ackerman on Facebook by visiting facebook.com slash first coast oncology. Ask your questions and they will answer them.